Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at an actual CPA simulation that was released by the AI CPA. This CPA simulation is as official and as real as it gets because the AI, AI CPA administered the CPA exam and this is a BEC simulation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. In this session, I'm going to be covering mostly managerial accounting and cost accounting concept, but BEC also cover introduction to finance. On my website, you'll, you'll find additional resources such as multiple choice, true, false, notes, PowerPoint slides, and if you're studying for your CPA, 2,000 plus CPA, CPA questions. So I'm going to go to the simulation and we're going to work the simulation together. This is the simulation that we're going to be working today. So the first thing is first scan through what's required. Actually, before I even I look at what's required, look, I'm going to be uh, computing the selling price variance, the sales volume variance, the direct labor rate variance, the direct labor efficiency variance. If you are ready for the exam, this should be like a, a, a site of release. Like, great, this is, I, I, I like those topics because I'm ready. So before you go to the exam, you see these topics, you're like, okay, great, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, what do I need to tell you here? For example, a simulation like this is a bonus. Why? One thing is, you, you cannot take the BEC exam if you cannot compute those variances. That's one thing. Two, those variances are independent. So if you get one of them wrong, you may get the other one right. So they're not interdependent. So do, two good news. One, you should be familiar with the topic. Two, each situation is independent from the other. Okay, so let's take a look at what we are giving. And this is also another opportunity for you to remind you that just studying multiple choice questions for the exam is not sufficient. And the reason is the simulation try to test your understanding. You may get the multiple choice question correct by mistake, but when it comes to simulation, you have to understand everything about the topic that you need to understand. So... A manufacturing company, first let's take a look at this. A manufacturing company is reviewing its result for the quarter ended June 30th, year four. The company uses, uses standard cost based on past performance and expectation for each quarter to monitor performance and analyze variances. This should be like basic knowledge for you walking into the exam. At the end of each quarter, variances are identified and investigated further. For each of the variances in column A, these are the variances, Complete the following using the information provided in the exhibit above. So they're giving us exhibit. We're going to look at them. In column B, compute the amount of the variance for the quarter. Enter all the amount as positive whole number. In column C, select whether it's favorable or unfavorable. So here I'm have to select whether it's favorable or unfavorable. And you get a simulation like this. You should be like, good. I'm lucky I got this simulation. This is what we are giving. We are giving standard the quarter June 30th year 4 the standard amount and the actual amount. You just scan through them real quick. Okay, that's, that's excellent. And we are giving also other information. Under other information, actual unit produced and sold for the quarter were 9,500. 9, the budgeted were 10,000 with a profit per unit 588 versus the profit per budget should have been 460. Each unit was sold for 21 with a budgeted selling price of 20. Good, that's good. That's good news. We sold for we sold it for more what we budgeted for, but we sold less unit. The actual contribution margin for the quarter was seven dollars and forty eight cents. The budgeted contribution margin per unit was six ten. Well, our contribution margin was higher. Assume the contribution margin is equivalent to operating margin. Standard labor hours and unit of material use in operation has been adjusted for the actual production. Okay, that's that's fair enough. I have everything that I can start the problem. Now you focus on each on each variance separately starting with the selling price variance what is the amount of the selling price variance first of all before you even look at the amount it's favorable why it's favorable just make sure you click it's favorable even if you don't know the amount why because if you look at this information we were told that the budgeted selling price was uh, 20 and we sold it for 21 what does that mean it means we have a dollar we have a dollar extra we received a dollar extra for 9,500 unit. So what does that mean? It means it's favorable 9,500. This is what it means because I sell it for a dollar more and I sold 9,500 unit. So practically I'm done with number one. So, but the first thing is I knew it's favorable because I sold it for more what I budgeted. Done. 
sales volume varies for operating income well before you even compute the answer before you even compute the answer you should be able to know what whether it's favorable or unfavorable sales volume variance it means did you sell more or less what you budgeted you sold less you were budgeted 10,000 you sold 9,500 immediately the sales volume is unfavorable because you sold 500 unit less now those 500 unit they're asking us for the operating income well what was the operating income what was the operating what was the budgeted operating income let's look at this let's look at uh, other information so so the the budgeted contribution margin was 610 but we sold 500 less so what we need to do now pull the calculator here the first one we didn't even need use the calculator 500 times times six dollars and ten cent so it's three thousand five fifty unfavorable again and input all the answers as positive remember because the variances it doesn't matter the unfavorable tells you whether it's favorable or unfavorable you don't need to put it as minus that's it that's that's basically those those the first two the first two questions now you are asked about the direct labor rate variance now i'm gonna deviate a little bit here i'm just gonna tell you that if you want to learn about those variances, the direct labor variance, the direct efficiency variance, the, ma the material price variance, the vari variable overhead variance, what I suggest you do is to visit my website. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a shortcut or a hint about these questions where you could use either on the simulation or on the multiple choice. And I use this three column, I, I teach this, and I don't, I don't, I did, I did not invent this, but I explain in detail this three column formula, actual quantity, times actual price this is i call this column one then column three i call it standard quantity times standard price so this is this so so column one is actual column three is standard then in the middle i pull the actual quantity from this column and i pull the standard price from this column then what you would do next is if you compare this is column two now this is column let me change the color and this is column two this is column two now if you if you compare column one to column two notice column one and column two actual price actual quantity and actual quantity is the same so the only difference is the price the actual price versus the standard price so if you find the difference between column one and column two that's going to give you the price or the rate variance well the price is for the material the rate is for the labor so it's going to deal only with the price so the only thing that's different between column one and column two is the price if you compare column two to column three if we compare column two and column three notice the standard price standard price is the same the only thing that's different is the actual quantity and the standard quantity so what we are looking at here is the quantity variance or the efficiency variance and in my in my lecture and my on my youtube and on my youtube and on my website i have plenty of explanation and exercises that's going to help you do this okay i just want to go on a tangent just to tell you that i can help you tremendously if you're having problem with this okay so the first thing is the direct labor rate variance all right the direct labor rate variance first thing you should be able to know whether whether it's favorable or unfavorable before you do any computation why because if you look at the standard labor labor rate variance labor rate variance we're supposed to pay 10 we pay 1050 immediately it's unfavorable so if you don't have time click unfavorable here this is half of the question is right now we need to know how much it's unfavorable well guess what it's 50 cent we pay 50 pennies more than we're supposed to 50 pennies more now those 50 pennies it's going to be computed by the actual direct labor because this is how much we actually spent how much did you actually spend eight thousand now i know the answer is four thousand but let me do the computation this way so i paid 50 cent more I paid, I'm gonna clear the tape. That's not working, there we go. I paid 50 cent more and I worked 8,000 hours. So it's 4,000. Therefore, I'm done with this question. I'm done with this question, it's $4,000. $4,000. Now we're gonna look at the table direct labor efficiency variance. Again, you should be you should be able to know whether it's favorable or unfavorable before you do any computation. Okay, uh, direct labor standard is 10,000. I was supposed to spend 10,000. I actually spent eight. Excellent. I'm favorable. 
because I, I, I saved 2,000 direct labor hours. I paid more, but I, I worked less, okay? So the direct labor, various efficiency, I saved 2,000 hour, I saved 2,000 hour, and I multiplied this by the standard price. Now, if you're asking, why do I multiply it by the standard? Go to my explanation and you will, you know, I don't want to, you know, not that I want to explain it now, but, you know, I don't want to deviate. I just want to show you how to solve this. I don't want to teach you how to do this in the sense of explaining. That's why I have my website and my YouTube. So it's, I told you it's favorable and it's 20,000. That's pretty good. So the employee did a good job by saving on time. Okay. Material price variance. Well, I'm supposed to pay $4. That's my standard. I paid five twenty-five. Well, unfavorable. Immediately, I'm going to put unfavorable. Okay. Now, now I need to know how much it's unfavorable. It's dollar twenty-five. I paid dollar twenty-five more, and I used I used actually used four thousand dollar twenty-five more, and I used with well, dollar twenty-five times four thousand. I can tell you right now it's five thousand dollar. I know the answer is five thousand dollar. So it's dollar twenty-five times four thousand actual. $5,000, it's unfavorable. Now I need to know material usage variance. Hopefully it's the same thing as labor. I was, I did a good job. I did not use a lot of material. Good. I was supposed to use 4,750. I used 4,000. Excellent. Here I saved on the material. I saved 450 uh, units, okay? The actual material used. So I, 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 I saved 750 units, which is good. Again, it seems here what's happening is we paid we paid more, but when it comes to usage, we used less. Now we're going to multiply it by the standard price. So I'm going to take 750. Let me clear this. 750 times the standard price, which was uh, $4 times 4 should be 3000 Yes. So... The material, I already told you, it's favorable because we spent, we used less unit, so it's favorable, and the answer is 3,000 favorable. 3,000 favorable. Now let's take a look at the variable overhead spending variance. The actual was 23,440. The direct, la the direct, direct labor hours is $2. The standard is... Uh, 10,000, but they're looking for the spending variance. And this is where my three column um, works. So let me go ahead and uh, plug this in my three column just to show you how this whole thing works. Let me go to my one note. So we have the actual quantity times the actual price, which is we don't know yet, but we know that the actual is 23,440. So that's 23,440. We know the actual quantity is 8,000 hours. We know that the actual quantity is 8,000 hours. Now we can find the actual price. Basically, simple calculation. If we take 23,440 divided by 8,000, we find it's $2.93. Now the standard quantity is 10,000 times the standard price of two dollars so the standard is twenty thousand now i know it's going to be unfavorable because i i paid 293 and the standard price is 230 but they're not asking me now they're asking me about the price variance so i have to plug in the column number two which is the actual quantity eight thousand times the standard price of two that's sixteen thousand the difference between those two is the price variance which is which is what? Let me just pull my calculator here. Calculator. So the difference between 23,440 and 16,000 is 7,440. 7,440. Now they, they could ask, also ask you what is the quantity or the efficiency variance? It's 4,000. The efficiency variance is 4,000. So you got to make sure you know, you answer what they're asking. So it's unfavorable, unfavorable because I paid more. Okay, and simply put, I paid more. I paid $2.93. $2 but from a quantity variance, I used less. I used less because I used only eight hours. So this is favorable. Now they, they can ask what is the total. The total will be the net of these two will be 3,440 unfavorable, the difference between those two. This is the total. So they could ask you about the price, 
They could ask you about the quantity, which is 4,000, or they can ask you about the total. But here we'll ask about the price. So you gotta make sure you know what you are being asked and answer the question correctly. And this is what I can, this is what I can help you the most with these variances if you use my method, not my method. Again, it's what I teach. So it's unfavorable. Where can you find this information? Again, you can find it on my YouTube or I believe it's 6,000, 6,000, 7,000. What was the difference? Sorry, before, just want to get the answer here. Where's the answer? 7,440, 7,440. So that's the answer. So what can I do? I, how can I help you? Well, I can help you when I... I can help you with I can help you with explaining these ratios and I'm not ratios these variances in details work an example multiple choice so by the time you get on the exam this is like drinking a cup of water it'll be so easy for you so go ahead visit my website subscribe you're gonna study for your CPA only once in your lifetime do it well it's a lifetime investment once you have your CPA you no longer have to do it again and again good luck farhatlectures.com is where you need to go and I'm always here to help you